This is question number three. We're told the table shows the times in days needed to repair the network of roads between six towns A, B, C, D, E and F following a flood. In part A for three marks, we're asked to use Prim's algorithm starting A to find the minimum connector for this network. You must list the arcs that form your tree in the order that you selected them. So what we're looking for is a minimum spanning tree from now a matrix. So the topic here is Prim's from a matrix. I need to start at A, so I'm going to circle A. At this stage now, I can cross out the row A. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to cross out this row. We now look down the column and consider the lowest weight. The lowest weight is 6. That means that I'm going to select C. So what this is telling me now is that I'm connecting A to C. And I'm just going to write that here before I delete this row. So AC is going to be equal to 6. I'm now going to delete the row and just put in a line for it. We can go ahead and do that. We now consider the lowest weight in the column A and the column C. So I've got 15, 9. I've got 12, 7 or 10. We can see that that is going to be the 7. And that's going to be CD. So what I'm going to do is now connect up D. So connecting up D, I can write that CD will be equal to 7. I'm now going to cross out the row including D. So that's what we've got like so. We now go down the column of A, the column of B and the column of D and look for the lowest weight. 15, 12, 10, 11 and 17. From there I can see that that's going to be 10. Therefore what I'm going to do is go ahead and connect up C to E. So I've chosen the one of lowest weight. That is E. I'm going to write that just here, CE, we know that that's going to be 10, and then I'm going to cross out the row. So let's go ahead and do that, we'll cross out the row, and we've done that. We now need to consider all of the weights where we've got now the column A, the column C, the column D, and the column E. By the looks of it, it's going to be this one just here, a 5, I've got the choice of 15, I've got 12, I've got 17, I've got 14, and I've got 5, and that would now connect E to F. So writing this here, E to F is going to be equal to 5. So I've got now E to F, I can circle F, and then I can cross out the row. So that's what I'm left with now, and we are sorted. Now if we look down here, all we've got to do is connect B. We want the lowest weight of 15, 12, and 14, we can see that that's going to be C to B, and that's going to be 12. So I'm going to write that C, B will be equal to 12. We can go ahead and connect up B, and then we simply put a line through the row. So that is now done. So I've done prims from a matrix or from a table, and simply stated now, in order, the arcs that I've selected. So if you want, you can put that this is going to be 1, if you want to... Uh, number them 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So remember if we have a minimum spanning tree, so if we've got a minimum spanning tree and there are n vertices, we're going to have now n minus 1 arcs. Okay, in uh, part B for one mark it says draw your minimum connector. Minimum connector is a minimum spanning tree using the vertices given in diagram 1 in the answer book. So here we go, this is what we want. So what we've got then, I'm going to just go ahead and do this. We've got A to C, uh, so A to C, and I'll put the weights on them shortly. We've got C to D, uh, we've got C to E, we've got E to F, which is just there, and then we've got C to B, which is just here. Remember, with prims, you can't create cycles. With cruise calls, you can, but we're connecting now vertices. With prims, we're connecting the vertices. With cruise calls, we're adding arcs. So we can never uh, create a cycle with prims because we've already been to one, so we wouldn't want to go to it again. Um, so this is going to be 6. So A, C is 6. Uh, C to D is going to be 7. Uh, C to E is going to be 10. E to F is going to be 5. And then C to B is going to be 12. So that is what we've got. That's our minimum connector or minimum spanning tree. Okay, um, now... 
part C, it says uh, add arcs from D, E and F to diagram 2 in the answer book so that it shows the network of rows shown by the table. Two marks for part C. So let's see, this is what we need to do. We need to do this. So if we consider now A, A is connected to B, C and D. So I need to do A to D. So all I'm doing is just following this. I've already got B and C connected. So now we can see that. And then I'm just going to put on that this is going to be 9. Uh, so we've got 9 just here. Now if we consider B, B is connected to A, C and E. So we've already got A and C. So all I'm going to do is go to E and this should be quite nice. I'll go across there. So that's E. Now what does that give us? That gives us B to E is going to be uh, 14. If we now look at C, C is connected to A, B, D and E. So we need to connect to D and E as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So that is D, C to D and we can have C to E. So let's go ahead and put the weights on these. The weights from C to D is 7, C to E is 10. So C to D is 7, C to E is 10. Let's now go ahead and look at D. D goes to A, C, E and F. So we need to connect up these two. We've already got A and C, so we're going to go to E and F. So there's E down there, done that one, and then D to F. That's good. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so let's see what we've got. Uh, D to uh, F, that's 17. D to E is going to be 11. Uh, then we've got E. E goes to B. We've already got that one. E goes to C. And again, you can do this by symmetry if you like. Um, e to C is already done. E to D is already done. Uh, and all we need is E to F. So as you can see now, the symmetry is down the diagonal if you want to think of it that way. Um, I'm doing it in a very sort of ploddy way, but hopefully it makes some form of sense. Uh, and then this is going to be 5. And then we know from F now that all that's done is D to E and we've already done that. So that's sorted, that's done. And let's just check we've got all the weights on. So that's our two marks. In part D, it says now for three marks, use Kruskal's algorithm to find the minimum connector. You should list the arcs in the order in which you consider them. In each case, state whether you're adding the arc to your minimum connector. So this time, we're employing Kruskal's. With Prims, we can start anywhere. With Kruskal's, we need to start with the arc of lowest weight. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is just consider and be very careful. We need these now in the weight that they appear. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and write this out. So the one of lowest weight is going to be this one right here, and that's going to be E to F. So E to F is equal now to 5. What I like to do is just now scribble them out. Ideally, I want a different colour, and I think I'm going to take my time and do a different colour purely based on the fact that I don't want to miss any out. So again, slightly laborious doing it this way, but hopefully now you can see we're not going to make mistakes. The fact that I'm using uh, the, the different colours here just makes a bit of a hassle. Ideally, I want to see one on here if I can see and one on there, but the white doesn't show up on there, and the red is a nightmare on it. Um, anyway, moving on. AC. AC is the next one, isn't it? AC is going to be 6. So let's go ahead and just put 6 on there. That's done. Okay, so I'm now narrowing this down. The next one we want is of lowest weight. That looks to be C to D. Uh, so C to D is 7. So C to D is equal to 7. And we can put that one on. Let's quickly do this. If you want to skip ahead um, or hit pause or do whatever, um, don't wait for me as I generally say. Um, A to D. A to D is going to be the next of lowest weight. That's going to be 9. And we can now just pop that on there. Uh, this is just a safety net, so we don't we don't miss any out. Uh, let's now look at C to E. So C to E looks to be the next one. C to E is going to be 10, and we can go ahead and check that one off. So that's that one. C to E is 10. Next one, um, we've got uh, D to E, which is 11. Now, in this particular uh, network, we don't have any of equal weight. If you've got when you if you've got for example if this was now instead of 17 it was 11 it doesn't matter you choose um, and remember minimum spanning trees are not always necessarily unique so here we could have 11 and 11 if we had 11 11 and I could put de or df um, it doesn't matter you decide uh, so that's that one okay so that's 11 done uh, let's now look at next one B to C B to C is going to be 12 so B to C is going to be 12 and we're gradually doing this. So B to C. So B to C is 12. And then I've got, uh, what am I left with? A, A, B, 
So A, B, um, A, B is going to be 15, and then D, F is going to be 17. So straight off, I'm only offered now on this uh, a total of three marks, and you can see it's, it's taken some time because I'm using this method. Um, and we can do that. Right, OK. So with cruise course, what we do is consider them. We start with the one of lowest weight. So if I choose, in fact, we'll just pick this up and just move these to below. We consider now the one of lowest weight. And now we add it if it doesn't create a cycle. Quite clearly, adding the first one is not going to create a cycle. So what I'm going to do is add now. Uh, and we can put this on here. In fact, let's just go ahead and choose a different color line. We can put this on here. I like to actually draw it to make sure I'm not creating a cycle. Again, you certainly don't have to. You can probably see it from here, or you could just mark on. If you want to, what you could do is just, see, I've used this um, on my my thing. Technically, I, you know, you could say, well, you shouldn't use it, but um, we can do that anyway. So first one is going to be E to F, so I'm going to add that one. So yes, I'm going to do it. And my code is going to be equals add to the, net, uh, to the minimum spanning tree. And that is going to be reject. OK. So this one now puts on here. This is going to be E. This is going to be 5. This is going to be F. Now what about A to C? Well, A to C quite clearly is not going to create a cycle. So I'm going to add that. And I'm going to put that just here. And this is going to be A to C. And A to C will look something like so. So A to C will do that. Again, this is not immaculate, but it gives us some idea. So this is A to C. So A to C, that's going to be 6. We can do that one. We've got C to D. Yes, I can include C to D. So let's go ahead and do C to D. So C to D, yes, I'm going to include. So we'll tick it off. That's not going to create a cycle. So we've got C to D. C to D is going to be 7. Now, A to D is going to create a cycle, and we can see that if I put it there, we don't want that, so we reject it. And as you can see now, uh, with cruise calls, we can uh, create cycles, which we couldn't with prims. With cruise calls, we're adding arcs to the, net, uh, the minimum spanning tree. With prims, we're connecting vertices. In some questions, they're going to ask you the difference between them, um, and these are some of the differences. With cruise calls, we're um, adding the arcs uh, which means it doesn't have to stay connected. With prims, it's got to stay connected. A disadvantage of cruise calls is for larger or, or unwieldy uh, numbers. If we're dealing with massive networks, we don't want to be listing this out first. Also, another advantage of prims is that we can do it from the, the matrix here. Um, anyway, getting back, let's go ahead and add the next one. So C to E. C to E we can do. That's not going to create a cycle. So that gives me now uh, 10. What have we got? CE is equal to 10. That's just fair. Uh, DE, um, we don't want DE. That's going to create a cycle. We can see across there. That's no good. Uh, B to C, yeah, we can do B to C. So let's now do that. Um, so this should just about get us sorted. So let's put that on. And B to C, let's do B to C. B to C is going to be 12. We add that one. Clearly now we're going to reject A, B. And just going through these, clearly we're going to reject D to F. So this is what we've got. Okay, and again, taking loads of time, but hopefully it's giving you some learning points as well. And if we look at what we've got, it is the same minimum connector or minimum spanning tree as we did in part B. Okay, so now uh, for one mark, we need to state the minimum time needed. So we can either add these ones up or we can go back down to cruise schools uh, and do that. It's entirely up to you. So we were working now in days. We're told this is days, so I'm just going to include that. So 13, 23, then we're going to have now, what's that going to give me? 28, 40. So in part E, I'm just going to put 6 plus the 7 plus the 10 plus the 5 plus the 12 is equal to 40 days. So that now is the minimum time needed to reconnect the six towns. So it must have been quite some um, mammoth flood if you're uh, not being able to drive them for 40 days. So there we go. Uh, we take taken lots of time, but hopefully it's given you a bit more of an insight to prims and cruise calls. Expect definitions to come up and you may, in some exam questions, be expected to state differences between them. So quick main differences with cruise calls. Cruise calls adds the arcs rather than connecting the vertices. Cruise calls must start now with the lowest weight arc. 
cruise calls doesn't have to stay connected. A disadvantage is with larger networks, it becomes a nightmare listing all of these out. And again, with unwieldy numbers, it's often harder to see. A disadvantage is that you can create cycles with cruise calls. Advantage of Prims, you can start where you want. It's easier for larger networks. We can do it from a table. It does, a disadvantage, it does have to stay connected. And an advantage is that you wouldn't create cycles. There are a couple of more that um, are at the back of my mind, but hopefully that's given you enough if you're asked to state, for example, three differences. So there we go, question three, plus a bit more bonus learning material.